Hello, this is a small little video. Um, this is about the tasks that we want you to do this week and next week. So um, watch the video. It will only be a few minutes long. Um, and then at the end, the task is explained for you. So it's really important that you watch the video and don't just rush to the end because it will explain everything. And this is what we're going to be looking for. So just to talk to you about the GCSE papers, this is where we're going. So at GCSE, you'll have to do four papers, two for GCSE English Language and two for GCSE English Literature. And there they all are. And you can see. And at the moment, you're working on the poetry, which is section B of literature paper two and you can see that that paper is worth 60 percent so you can see why we're starting something big so there are 15 poems we're only going to do a few this term but we're just getting you into the habit of working towards GCSE now we need to look at stuff for the examiner so what is the examiner looking for well these are the things that the examiner is looking for for all things in GCSE English literature so they are looking for your ideas um, linked to the question. So are you answering the question and your use of quotations? They're looking to see that you can refer to the choices and the terminology that the writer uses, the techniques. And then they're looking to see what you know about the reasons behind the choices and what the writer's message. So those three things are the things that you're going to be working on in GCSE. And you've got to make sure you get those because that's what you're going to be assessed on. So as an examiner myself, these are the things that I'm looking for in an answer when I'm looking at GCSE exam scripts. So how does that look? Well, we tend to use roughly the PUT structure. So the idea is, so you're given a question, and this is something that you're going to do Christmas Carol next year. So how does Charles Dickens present Bob Cratchit in Christmas Carol? So there's a question, and, and that's generally the kind of structure of the question you'd get. So how does something present um, this in the story or play or poem or whatever. So you can see there's a bit of a structure there. So Charles Dickens presents Bob Croucher as a victim of society. Dickens uses the symbol of a small coal fire as a way to show how weaker and smaller Bob is in comparison to Scrooge with his larger fire and ample supply of coal. So there the uses is really about the techniques, what technique the writer uses. And then we look at the last thing, the T, which is teaching. The writer teaches us that there is a clear inequality in society and how the poor have the inability to change their status quo. So they're unable to change the way, way things are at the moment. So that's just to give you an example. Now, the PUT can be in any order. However, it probably best by going presents, uses and teaches, working in your paragraphs of having that idea. And the key thing here really is looking at the words. If you're using the words presents, uses and teaches, you're looking at the things the examiner wants you to look at. So you're looking at how ideas, presentation, uses what the techniques and what is it teaching us, the message behind it. So this is to put it clearly. So presents is about your ideas, uses is terminology, and teaches is the reason behind the message. What is the writer trying to do? Now, I'm going to start off mainly focusing on presents. Now, this is about ideas, and this is what students often make a problem um, and the issues they have when they're writing about any text, so a poem or a novel, or whatever. So what they tend to do is they tend to not answer the question. And they write about what they want to write, what they feel comfortable with. And the examiner doesn't want that. They don't want to know what you know. They want you to answer the question. So that's a really key thing because you might know something about a novel, but what you're not doing is actually answering the question. And the examiner wants you to answer the question. So that's a really thing, big thing to check out. Um, and the other thing is that students often write the first thing that comes to mind. And in particular in poetry, what they tend to do is they tend to just reword the poem and they'll just say, this poem is about a man that does this and this is what happens. And the examiner doesn't want you to do it. The examiner knows the poem and you've got to think with that in your mind. So you telling somebody what the story of the poem is about is not going to get you any marks. All you're doing is just stating the obvious. So you've got to think about I've got to say something about this poem that isn't obvious and isn't rewording the poem. Um, 
Another thing that students do is they tend to chuck everything about poem. So yes, I've made some videos for you, but I'm not expecting you to mention every single thing in those videos. Um, there are just some things you could mention, some ideas, but you've got to select what you think will be the best thing to talk about rather than just chuck everything in there. Because English is very different to other subjects. English, you get the marks for explanation. You don't get it for the number of points. And so, you know, chucking loads of ideas isn't going to get you more marks. It's actually going to stop you from getting more marks because you're not explaining things. You're just chucking everything. Um, one big thing with poetry and talking about novels and plays is students focusing on techniques rather than ideas. You must start with ideas first. So, yes, you may be able to spot lots of techniques in a poem, but you know what? If you haven't got what the ideas of the poem are about, then those techniques are pointless. You know, the examiner is not going to give you marks for spotting techniques alone. And actually, the first thing the examiner looks for are your ideas. The techniques are just to help you explain an idea. So you've got to use your ideas and you've got to think about it. And the last thing is, is about you know, not using quotations. You must use something from the text to support your idea. So what are the poems that we've studied so far? So we've studied Exposure, Remains and War Photographer. Now, if you have not looked at those videos or not watched those videos, then you have got the YouTube channel. And I suggest you do that before you even start the writing of a paragraph for us, because really you need to know these poems. And I'll take you through those. Now, um, register for our YouTube channel because we'll keep adding videos as we go along. This is going to be somewhere where you can see them and remind yourself. And we do forget about poems. So if you've forgotten one, I think, oh, well, you know, exposure we did quite a while back. I'm going to go back to exposure. Then do that. It will help you. And it's there as a revision tool. You know, and we do forget stuff. So it's OK to forget stuff. But obviously it's there as a tool to help you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just walk you through the kind of thing that I want you to do with this little task here. So I'm going to give you a question and I'm going to ask you to write a paragraph about in response to that question about one of the poems. So this is a practice. So I'm going to take you through I'm going to model it for you. And then I'm going to ask you to go away and have a go at writing one. OK, you are writing only about one poem. You're not writing about all the poems. So just one poem and this is going to go through it with you. So if we have a look, the first thing you do is you look at your question. And the key thing we've got in our question, it says, how does the poem present settings in conflicts and war? So the key thing in this question is settings. So I've got to do some thinking about how are settings used in a poem. So I've got to do some really, really think you know some deep thought about setting but also thinking about war and what does it teach us because all these poems are set somewhere so what is it telling me about this setting so i've taken from exposure so i've taken just a little stanza and just thought just for today i'd look at this stanza here so watching we hear the mad gusts tugging on the wire like twitching agonies of men among its brambles Northward, incessantly, the flickering gunnery rumbles, far off like a dull rumour of some other war. What are we doing here? So think of some ideas. So what is this poem here showing us about settings? So what ideas could it come up with? So this is the really important stage. Now, yes, I've picked out some bits to associate with setting. So I've coloured those in. Now, I'm not looking at techniques. Often what students do is they go, there's the question. Let me find some techniques. What can I say? Oh, there's a rhetorical question there. Right. And what what often students do is they try to spot all the techniques and then they look at the question and go, right. How can I link those techniques to that question? Which is a bit of a backwards approach to looking at poetry, because really, you know, poetry is about ideas first, ideas and emotions. And then it's the techniques. And so you really got to think about some ideas. So for me. Looking at this poem, I get the sense that the the environment and the setting is violent. And you've got the brambles, then you've got the mad gusts there as well. But also, I think this idea of mad gusts presents that something not quite sane 
um, angry. And I said there's quite masculine aggression that this, you know, the wind is tugging on the wire. It's being aggressive. It's not gentle. Tugging is a sharp pulling action. And we've also got this idea about how not quite set um, separate from reality. So, for example, far off, like a dull rumour of some other war. It's almost like this moment here, where they are, is away from the war. And so they're not part. Here we go, some my terrible writing using the PowerPoint. So the idea that they're here, somewhere away, and they, they can hear a dull rumour, so they can't quite make out things. So that sense of kind of distance. But also, I think I've got ideas there about how it's a battle between man and nature, because we've got the wind tugging on the wire, and we've got men who are trapped among the brambles. Notice a natural imagery, but about um, the wire. So we've got the idea of a battle between the wind and man. And so I think there's an interesting idea there. No, I've not talked about techniques. I'm talking about ideas. And I'm not doing the typical thing going, the poet presents setting by using similes, metaphors, and things like that. I'm kind of saying, right, he presents it by setting it in a violent way or saying it's about masculine aggression. I'm starting with a big idea first, and that's going to be my starting one. We know first impressions last, so you need to give the examiner a really good first impression and show them that actually you know stuff and you can pick out stuff. So this is what I decided to do. Owen presents the idea that nature and man are fighting in a war. Now, what I've done for you there is I've kind of used the phrase, the idea that. Now, this is a nice little thing. You can either, you could do this, so it, it's setting up an idea, an argument. So the idea that or the concept of that. OK, we could change it and say, you know, presents nature as violent. All right, so you can do it. There's a number of different ways. I quite like the idea of that because what it means is it forces you to write about a big idea. And the bigger, the better idea. And, you know, and you might think, well, you know, it seems a bit far fetched. If you were saying that this poem was about aliens, that's far fetched. But actually, you know, poetry is about thinking. So, you know, if you find an idea there in the poem, then go with it, you know. As an examiner, we reward intelligent, original opinions and ideas. So start off with something like that. So whatever poem you're doing, start with something like the poet presents the idea that or the concept of that or the battle between it gives you a good start. So then now we've got our put a P thing. So it presents. So how does the writer present setting? We present setting as the idea of battle between man and nature fighting. So what am I going to use as my evidence for that? So I'm going to use the word mad. I'm going to pick out the adjective mad and start thinking about that word. Now, remember, when you're looking for techniques, we don't want you to spot every single technique in the poem. In fact, that's the worst thing to do. We want you to look at one technique and really, really explain and explore that. So. The word mad shows us that the wind is angry. Angry what is about what is happening or happening. Mad can also mean insanity. And so could be an idea that really nature is insane and gone mad because of what's happening. Or it could be a question about is war mad? Are we mad to be fighting in war? We could also say that there's a level of violence in that. We can say it's personification because the wind has been given um, human characteristics and pathetic fallacy is a form of personification where actually you're given um, personal features to something in nature. So that could be the weather or it could be something physical like a tree. But this idea of personification and pathetic fallacy. 
It's also a negative image. Always have that in your mind. What is it meant to do? Is it meant to be a positive image for the reader or is it a negative image? And I think this is a very negative image. And also it's a very angry, aggressive. image. So then we start off with that idea. So Owen presents the idea that nature and man are fighting in a war. The writer's use of the adjective mad and the use of personification gives us a sense of the violence of the environment and experience for the soldiers. So I've now got my uses. So I've got some terminology and that's what I need and that's enough for a paragraph your technique okay so you don't need to have hundreds of things don't chuck loads of other things the next bit is where you're going to get most of your marks so your put your p your presents and your uses really could be like two sentences the next bit is where you're going to get your marks and this is where you step up your writing so you're going from an idea this is what's in the poem that's showing me that idea we're now going to develop that further. Owen reveals the experience and exposure the soldiers experienced in World War One. OK, so notice I've got the word exposure linking into the title poem. His use of the weather reflects his thoughts that war is unnatural. And so the weather is attacking the soldier because of what they are doing. So I've kind of explained what's happening here, but also the idea that it's unnatural. OK, so I'm using my own words to describe what the poem is about. We know that Owen was against war and he's using the weather to teach us how unnatural it is. Now, look at that background information. I'm showing that I know the poem and I know a bit of background information. I'm not giving boring factual stuff about it. I'm kind of linking what I think to what I know about Owen as a poet. It could also be read that God is unhappy with the events and he is punishing man for his involvement. Now, that's a really deep idea, isn't it? That this is it may be nature, but actually it could be the wind is representing God. So I'm really, really pushing my ideas and my understanding about this now taking it further subtly owen is questioning the religious standpoint in war for him it is unjust and against god's wishes now look at that development owen presents the idea that nature and man are fighting the war there's my choice that I've looked at the word mad and look at all that explanation sentences that I've done to explain that point. That's what we want. And actually, this stuff here is where you're going to get your marks when writing about poetry. If you start on the right foot, this bit here is where you develop and extend and show your understanding and also your thoughts because some of those are my thoughts about the poem right so let's have a look at that paragraph again just so clear because this is what i'm going to ask you to do i'm going to ask you to write about one of the poems in relation to question and write a paragraph and i'm going to give you some feedback based on that paragraph about what you need to do and then in a couple of weeks, what I'm going to get you to do is do another paragraph and see if we can build that progress in there. So we start off with our idea. So that's where we do our thinking. And that's why you shouldn't rush into answering about poetry. Think of what the big idea is that's going on that you want to talk about in the poem. Then you link it into the choices and always go for ideas first then techniques do not look at a poem and find all the techniques that is the worst thing to do think of the ideas in the poem and then link into techniques okay because what you want to do is you want to start with ideas and use those techniques to support that the hard thing for any student is to look at alliteration and then try and work out what the big idea is from that one little bit of alliteration that's hard and you know that so we want you to avoid that so start with the big ideas then you want to be talking about 
what is it teaching us? And notice I use different words and I've underlined some of them here. Okay, reveals, questioning, you know, those are just other words linked to teacher that we can use. So you can use Owen teaches us, Owen is teaching us the religious standpoint. Well, but I'm using different words to help us to avoid that repetition. So we don't want to be using the word teaches us, teaches us all the time. But it's that green stuff that's going to get you those higher marks. OK, that's what you need to be working on, that explanation. What can you say about this to develop it and take it further? And it's about giving reasons. So the task, this is what we want you to do. We want you to write one PUT paragraph about one of the poems studied so far. But the question you're going to look at is how does the poem present power or powerlessness? So you need to think about which of the poems that we looked at that shows somebody in power or somebody that's got no power, who's powerless. And what I want you to do is want to start with the, your paragraph is to have an idea. What is it saying? The poem saying about power. What technique is the writer using to show that power or powerlessness? And then the key thing is explain the writer's message. Now, we don't want you to do this as a fancy on a word document. You can simply put this in the comment box and just type it in there. And if you do it that way, then I can quickly mark it and give you some quick feedback based on that. This is the practice because we're going to do another one at the end of the term and it's going to be a different question. But we're building up your ability to write about the poems effectively. OK, so your task is to write me one paragraph and put it in the comment box. OK, if you've got any questions, anything you're not sure of, message me on showing my homework and I will help you with that. Good luck.